then we moved into our house. Um, we built a house and moved in and we were so excited to start our life together, officially being roommate free and in our house. Um, and then I found out I was pregnant like two weeks after we moved in Mm -hmm. and I was, we were planning on having kids, but I was not happy about it. Mm -hmm. Like my husband was more happy than I was, um, just not ready. And yeah, so that was kind of, that was, that was a really dark feeling, but, um, how I saw God through that was, um, when we went into our first ultrasound and they told me that it was twins and then I got excited which is totally messed up. Like (laughs) you're not excited for one baby, but then you're excited for two. That is so wrong. Like, (laughs) and I knew that that was wrong in me. And like, you know, I had this feeling that something bad was going to happen like the whole time. And then, um, at 17 weeks, like, or it was, it was before then around like 14 weeks, like, you know, freshly out of the first trimester, things started going, like questionably wrong. I was like, what is happening? My doctors wouldn't tell me anything. And then all of a sudden, you know, at 17 weeks, they're like, you're going to have to selectively reduce and like terminate one of your babies or both of them are going to die. And I was like, what? Like just absolutely devastated, devastated. Like, and, um, so that just kind of, you know, all my feelings that I had had before just show me like, you know, you're going to feel this way. Like I'm going to teach you a lesson. That's what God was telling me. Like you are going to learn something. And I went from not wanting to have a baby to wanting to being so lucky that I'm having two babies to literally fighting for their lives. And I don't know if I'm going to be blessed with these babies. I'm just some arrogant little brat, like, and you know, God, this is what I deserve, you know? And, um, God, I think he really wanted me to prove that I was ready to be a mom. I I don't know who knows, you know? Um, but I gave up everything for those guys. Like I literally went on bed rest, um, for, well, first, I went against my doctor's orders. You know, my doctor told me that there was nothing I could do to save my babies. Um, And he had been doing this for over 20 years. Um, He's still practicing. He's seriously like the smartest guy I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I I did my own research and talked to some other women that had been through the same thing and gave him some research. Like, this is legit, you know, like, and he looked at it and told me, I even know one of these colleagues' names, like in this research article, but I still don't believe it because I've never seen it. And so um, I decided to do it anyways. And that that moment, like sitting in that office and he's telling me that my baby, like there's nothing that I can do to save my babies. And God's voice is just like telling me, like, don't listen. You know, like, don't listen. Like I could have made a life changing choice for me, my children, just based off of what that man said. If, if I had not chosen to take a leap of faith and think like, you know, it was so faint that, that voice in my head, like, it's not even a voice, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's more like words come into your mind. And they're formulated in a sentence. You can understand like thoughts are revealed to you and um, like peace and love amidst a very like scary, stressful time. It's like, yeah, like you would want to when God speaks, it's like, of course, that's what you would want to believe. But it takes faith to believe that goodness. So another faith building moment. So, yeah, so well, what? it wasn't really it, for a long time. I mean, something that really strikes a chord with me is people who go through hard things. And like when people say, like, why does God make bad things happen to good people? You know, like, I really think that there's a greater lesson that we all have to learn. And it's, you know, between you and God. And sometimes you don't learn it until way later afterwards. Um, But I think. 
I can't say that I had faith doing that. Like I had two options, like get rid of my babies or put it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. And we have that with everything in life. Like you can do what you want to do, or you can do what God wants you to do, which is a really hard choice to make because like that voice is so quiet and it's like a gut intuition feeling. You don't know if you should even listen to it. Yes. And that's where I was at the whole time. I was like, what do I do? What literally, what do I do every day? I I spent 13 weeks on bed rest and every single day I spent crying and I was like angry with God. Like, why did you do this? What is going to come from this? Like, it was just constantly in conversation, you know, no matter what you do, God, after I had said my piece with him and told him all my feelings and cursed at him, I told him, no matter what you choose to do, I'm going to try and find the good in it. You know, what, whatever it is, even with bad situations, there has to be some good, some lesson that comes from it that can impact other people's lives. Yeah, I just spent every day crying and, you know, just wondering what what's going to happen and how I'm going to react to it. And I told God, I said, I'll never forget. He just like brought this up to me recently. And I don't know how I remembered it, but I told him, you know, if you, if you give me these babies, I will make it my life's mission to share our story with everybody mm-hmm. and to share my story of faith, because this, this story of the babies was really what did it for me. Like what made me see how I should give God all, all of the permission and all of the rights to make decisions for me, because I know that I don't know any better. And, you know, I see here and now, Yeah. even though I try to think about the future, you know, like he sees the future. So I would rather take a step back and see what he does before I go and mess something up again. You know, I've just had too many errors in my life <laughs> to think that I can make decisions based on my own knowledge, you know? So with everything in life, I always ask God or just wait to hear that voice, you know, mm-hmm. cause it's always true. I mean, he, he always reveals everything. I don't know if that's happened to you, but like, have you ever been like told something like, and then you feel like God is telling you to do it and then you do it and you just like get that affirmation. Like, that's exactly. Yep. Absolutely. That's something I've been reflecting on lately is because I used to like my whole life up until like the past couple of years was making impulsive decisions that never sat right in my gut. Um, down from like, even starting as a young girl, sneaking out, sleeping around the strip clubs, all the things that I did, those things didn't sit right in my gut. I didn't have peace. I didn't listen to that soft voice of God. Um, I just made quick decisions. And so I've been really actually learning that, like how to listen to that soft voice and to wait to make decisions until he gives me peace about it. Like, thank God you didn't go make that rash decision of like, okay, let's terminate one of the babies because like, I have to make this decision now. Like, thank God that you, you waited and you didn't make a decision like in that place of not having peace because now you have both of your babies here. Yeah. They're healthy. Yeah. There is actually something even crazier too, to add on to that is there was another option um, with the boys. Um, well, I'll just cut to the chase. We ended up finding out that they saved each other and what is typically a condition that ends in demise or can commonly end in demise of one or both babies. Um, and I think this is God's great design with twins, but my boys kept each other alive and like, because they share the placenta, like blood would go like from me to my boys and like the blood going to one baby was not going in. Mm. Right. But the other baby, he had good blood flow and they would also share between each other. So the blood would go like into him and through his brother when like this was just going out. Does Um, that make sense? So, so one of my babies was only getting blood from 
his twin brother yes. and the other one was getting blood from me. Um, so his twin brother kept him alive, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And his twin brother has a heart condition now because his heart worked so hard over time, keeping his brother alive. Yeah. But that was just like, when we found that out after everything, I found that out like months after they were born. I was absolutely blown away that that's, you know, that's the science of what God did. 